One of my absolute favorite things is to jump in a canoe, find a small mountain pond, somewhere high up in the mountains, jump in and just find out what's in there. A lot of times you'll find a beautiful environment and every time you'll have a nice, relaxing experience, as long as the fish are biting. So follow me down this short little portage through the timber to a beautiful mountain pond. All right, Ariel, lead the way, girl. And if you want to carry the canoe, I won't stop you. Well, that was a little bit of a jaunt. Um, not too bad, canoes are easy to carry, easy enough. And uh, we're here at the shoreline and I'm just gonna load the gear. Sometimes you gotta make two trips. So I wanted to go back and get the gear. I was easy, able to bring most of it down on one. So after we load the gear up, we'll uh, put in, the wind's blowing at my back towards you. And uh, so I'm gonna, first technique I'm gonna do, I can see right away, I'm gonna paddle up into the wind do the hard paddling first so that if I get stuck in a windstorm or something, it won't be so hard to get back to where I put in. So we're gonna paddle into wind, then we'll set up and I'll show you the techniques I'm gonna use for fishing a mountain pond. this looking looks like we got a bunch of down timber an old forest looks like a log jam probably made this pond it was originally just a creek channel so I bet if we find the original creek channel we will certainly find fish so let's do that first let's uh, head upwind which is actually where the inlet is where the stream comes in and generally most trout love a current. And uh, we should find some trout here at the head of the lake where the stream channel dumps in. We'll go from there. The wind has me drifting kind of quick, actually. I can use one hand with the paddle and try to slow myself down, but it's a really small, there's a lot of trees here that kind of protect me from the wind, but overall, still getting pushed pretty hard. One advantage is I can cover more water as I drift. Uh, the disadvantage is that I could just run smack dab into a bunch of these trees that we passed on the paddle in. Um, so right now I'm just kind of just exploring the pond. It got really shallow up at the inlet, so I drifted out a little ways. And I saw some fish coming up, so I'm throwing on a dry fly, a Royal Wolf, just a classic attractor fly. And below that I have a green wet fly dropper, unnamed, the bunch of fancy materials I got from Dave Downey in Scotland, who we've mentioned before. 
Got a little uh, seven and a half foot fiberglass rod, just a classic glass rod and uh, actually a pretty classic glass canoe. There we go. Oh, missed it. There's a bunch of little brookies in here. Let's see if I can bring one to hand and uh, get a better look. Little guys are hard to hold on to. They don't have any mass to pull against. So they can actually be harder to catch than big fish. So there's the wood stumps I can bump into and it's actually kind of holding me up. Just drifting off. Now it's just like bass fishing. I'm fishing around all these little pieces of trees just sticking up. It's cover for fish and uh, just watch fish. Fish it hard. There's a little take. <laughs> feisty, feisty. Yeah, absolutely. It's that brookie. Just a very typical mountain fish. Beautiful in every way. And I'm gonna throw it right back in. Uh, the summer heat's getting pretty hot. Rookies are invasive, but um, it's kind of all that's in the system. So I'm not gonna worry too much about me being the only one to pull them out, but. There we go, a little brookie, wild. Born in either the creek, probably born up in the stream where they would spawn. Brookies are really good at spawning in very small substrate, so you can often find them in more silted stream channels that you'll find definitely the native cutties in. Um, and rainbows and browns even have a hard time spawning in water that brookies do really well in. So with that spot, that really sandy stream channel, I'm gonna, I'll be surprised if I find anything but brookies, but we'll see what kind of brookies and other kind of fish might be in here, hanging off these logs. Coming into some woody debris here, a bunch of fallen logs and I'm drifting down into it. The wind has been really variable and difficult to predict what it's gonna do. But I was able to set up a drift sock. I'll show you that in just a sec, which slows down my drift with the wind. So even when the wind gusts, uh, the canoe won't gust quite as quick as uh, what the wind wants to do. And so now I'm just coming nice and easy into these uh, piles of snags and I should be able to pull at least a little brookie out of here, huh? So there's a, there's a lot to do for one angler in a canoe besides rhyme. <laughs> um, it's kind of the fun of it. I like challenges. As long as you have a good dog that stays still and the right. Looks like this one took the nymph. Oh, oh, ah. This is one of the smallest fish ever caught in the history of fish whispering. It's not very old. It did take a little pheasant tail nymph dropper. It's a beautiful little wild brook trout. Deserves a kiss and a release. And um, our drift is coming to an end. So I'll reset the drift, show you how I set the sock up right after this. Fish in the log jams. Oh, there we go. And it's gone. Looks like a typical little uh, brook trout that we've been getting out of here, just a couple inches long. R really quite tiny and a good example of what a non-native can do in the setting of most of the west. I mean, they're native to the east where they just have, they're used to a, a different environment and they get out west and the environment just seems so perfect. And they do too well, they stunt themselves, they eat everything. The habitat that they can spawn in is just about limitless. So brook trout stunt themselves. They use up all of their local resources. Well, not all, but most of the important stuff. And um, they don't get very big. It's important when that happens that if you are going to kill fish, that you kill the smaller ones. It'll be unlikely that you'll kill them all. But like this would be a good little, I guess I think of them as fish sticks because they're so little. Uh, after you cook them, you can eat everything, including the bones because they're so soft. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, sock demo. This, this is a drift sock filled with water that's now in my canoe. Um, lightweight, easy to carry when you're packing something. I didn't want to bring an anchor because anchors are so heavy. Um, but I'm going to get this set right now and show you kind of what it can do and how it'll help you slow down your drift, similar to an anchor. It won't set you still, but it'll slow you down so you can still fish effectively on small mountain lakes where you're packing your canoe in or a float tube or whatever. Just kind of drop it in. Generally, there's a weighted side and, an un and a float side. If that's the case, obviously put the weights down and um, then let her just kind of go away from the boat. You'll follow that line. I've got a carabiner here because it uh, helps add a little weight and um, you float nice and easy and you start fishing. So just one more trick on how to fish lightweight and effectively on any lake really, but especially in a mountain pond where you don't want to pack a lot of stuff. I think there's a group of fish behind me. So I'm just kind of casting backwards over towards that larger debris. Giving it just kind of an erratic retrieve. Saw a couple rise over there, so pretty good sign. All right, letting it sink, just feeling it out, kind of giving it a little countdown. Still keeping a little tension on the retrieve. a big one for out here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure um, we got the technique down, we got what they're hitting on. Um, they're hitting mostly those nymphs. They didn't come up and hit the, hit the royal wolf often enough. Um, they just didn't get it in their mouth. Uh, so I put on a couple of nymphs and they worked. But we basically found out brookies like this are about all that's in this pond, at least in this area of it. Uh, so next, right after this, we're gonna go find a spot where the fish grow a little bigger. <laughs>
the brookies were very beautiful, but not much of a battle. So we, uh, the dogs and I headed down the mountain a little ways when we were here at Georgetown Lake in southwest Montana. Georgetown Lake was a lake to begin with, but it's now dammed up. It's a much bigger reservoir, and there's a large diversity of, spe of fish species here. So it'll be interesting to fish this. It's a little bit more productive, more organisms. It's a little warmer water habitat than higher up in the mountains, and we should find more and larger fish. So let's get out on the water in the canoe and find out what's in here. All right, girl, here we go. So I've got the drift anchor set and I'm just drifting downwind just slightly. I saw some fish rising out here and so I just kind of followed, followed the rising trout and uh, I found a weed bed out here. So I'm sitting just off the edge of a weed bed and working the edges of the habitat because where there's weeds, there's bugs, there's bugs, there's fish, right? So I'm just going to work it and sometime in here we'll find a feeding fish. I'm fishing a sinking line and an eight and a half foot uh, about a six weight Fenwick fiberglass rod from late 60s probably. Uh, it's a little bit heavier. I'm throwing a five-ish weight uh, type five sinking line. Uh, so this type five line is going to give me a nice kind of middle sink range to get down deeper right at the base of the weeds preferably and then I'll strip my line in, give it a lot of action so it'll look like a, an insect trying to get away maybe a damsel, maybe a big old fat mayfly. And uh, by imitating the insects trying to get out of the weeds, should be able to get a fish in. That is, if the jet skiers don't ruin everything. Wow, what a beautiful fish. Absolutely stunning. Oh, looks like a rainbow. <laughs> okay, so we got in off the weeds and we found good sized trout. It was a fat, healthy rainbow feeding where all the bugs are. And I'm not sure I was really imitating a bug per se. I was using this little sparkler pattern, which is a pattern I learned. Uh, that's just using Dave Downey's fly tying materials, who we featured before on Fish Whispering. And um, it was a very effective pattern in a lock style championship that I was fishing in in Canada. Uh, worked very well for a lot of anglers, and it's working here on Georgetown Lake. Let's get in there and see if we can't fool a few more trout. It's rainbow right there. Look at that guy. Man, that's a fat rainbow. Look how fat these guys are. That one took that sparkler. That sparkler pattern has really been the choice meal for a lot of these fish. So fish in the weed beds with a sinking line was a very effective way to get the fish. One issue is with those sinking lines that you've got to pull, you're pulling underneath the water so you have a straight line from you to your fly and if there's weeds in between you and your fly oftentimes you'll catch the weeds. So I'm going to go right back out to that same weed bed but this time 
I'm going to use a Montana Rodsmith's glass rod, one that I love very much, a six weight. Um, and I'm going to throw this dry dropper rig with a dry fly on top and sink that dropper about two and a half, three feet. And I'm going to see if I can't pull something out, probably with that dropper down below that'll sink straight down into a little pocket, cast into the pocket of the weeds, find a fish down there, and there's a really good chance that they'll come up and hammer the dry fly too. So this could be a very effective way to get in the weed bed itself instead of fishing just the edges of it. So we'll see right after this if the dry dropper method will work as well as planned. I love canoeing and I love fishing. It's been such a great experience to come out, fish in different waters, find different types of fish, and use a variety of styles to catch those fish. Little tiny brookies all the way to some really good sized rainbows. It's been a great experience. And man, I tell you, no matter where you go, try a canoe every once in a while and see if you just don't get a little bit addicted. So I tell you what, it is really hard to not canoe and catch fish.